Hello there, welcome to another week in our garden. Very, very cold this week, very, very cold mornings, frosty mornings, good for the Brussels. Now, I've been asked how do I sharpen my secateurs? Well, this time of year I like to clean at least one setup and put it away for the winter. So I'll go through the cleaning of it and the sharpening and put it away for the winter. But the sharpening is basically the same anyway. Here's my secateurs, two sets. Both Falco, always have Falco. This is Falco 7, it's got a revolving handle so if you're doing a lot of pruning it twists with your hand and it's more comfortable. These are Falco 2, just straight secateurs, they're rather dirty because we was doing work on the front with them so they're ready for a clean. I've had both sets now for oh, 20 odd years, they're obviously different blades than what we started. The blade goes for about 2 or 3 years and then you just replace it. But I'll strip them down, we'll do the Falco 2, we'll strip it down, clean them, sharpen them. You'll need a couple of spanners. Now when you buy your secateurs you get a key with it that fits these, but mine's long since lost so we're down to using the spanners. Some cloth and a little bit of very fine sandpaper just to clean that blade and a sharpening pad. So let's strip it down. First thing you have to do is click it out and then take that spring off there. Okay, watch you don't lose that, quite expensive. Then we just loosen this this screw here which is holds that tooth sharpening. Uh, that holds the tooth nut in the middle that gives you your tension on the blade, okay? So we just loosen that off, look, if we can. Yeah, there it goes, look. We just loosen that off. And then, just put that to one side. Then I just put the spanner on and loosen that off. Just take that off. Over the years, it's lost some of its crown, look. Used to have a crown right round, but just lost it over the years, but never mind. Strip it down, take this out. That's it, you see? And then we'll be able to take that piece off. We'll just take that off. This is why I have a board so I can see. If you put it down the way you take it off, it'll be easy for you to put back together again. Although they're not difficult. Take that off, then they'll come apart, you see? All the rust and the mess that's in there, it all wants cleaning. Now to take the blade off, you just give it a good wobble and it comes off. There are three three pins on there and three holes in there what actually hold the blade in place. That's the blade away. There it is, that will come out. And there's your secateurs. We need to get these nice and clean. So what I normally do... We need to clean this, not on this front bar, because that's the cutting bar. If you go behind the bar, look, you can see the mess coming off it. Just behind that bar, it's fine. You won't get it like new no more, not of these age. Then I just clean out this bit of rust and mess that's in here. There you go. Let me give them a wipe. That's that side done. This side is not steel, but it will, will clean up. I think it's an alloy, that side of it. Just be, just clean it a bit. It could be this piece here that gets the dirtiest that you actually cut with. Again, just do the alloy, not steel. That's it, no more than that. And then clean there, look. Clean where the spring goes, round the bottom. That's that done. Now this one, same. Clean it all out. 
it's no good trying to take this off if you take this off and you set it for its tightness you'll find that when you lock it it keeps <coughs> when you're using your secateurs it'll keep locking so best to keep that stiff as possible that piece again this side's not too bad at all clean where that spring's going to go there or not. that's mucky that's it then. Now these are very, very old, so we're not going to get them right. There you go, that's that one done. Now the blade, remember this is very, very sharp. That will cut you straight away. It's a very, very sharp blade. So what to do, I put the blade facing down so I can't cut myself on it. Some fine sandpaper and just clean the blade. Try not to touch the front of the blade, we'll do that with the sharpener in a moment. You can keep going and get it light new if you want, but I don't. It's just enough to say that they're clean. We'll clean this piece just here now. That's it. Or the face of that, that bit of blade. Just wipe that off, just take the mess off. Now we do the other side, so we have to be careful because now your blade is exposed, lift off the wood. Just a bit of very fine sandpaper, please. Be careful with that blade. Not too much, remember this is the back of the blade, so any damage to the blade it will spoil the, the cutting ability of it. Get the dirt off. That's fine. We'll just do this, just here, look, that's got a bit of... Rodney's really going for it today. Now I need to put a little bit of a blade onto that, I need to clean that blade. I've got one of these blocks, they've got diamond pieces on them so they really sharp and it up quite well. This is, the red one is the finest one, that's the one I use on the second tier. So I turn that box over and I put the blade on the box and then I rub round it on the angle. That's really putting the blade, if you can just, I don't know if you can see, but I just hold it steady on this box and that's the smooth side, so I just follow the blade round with it and keep going until I see that the blades, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got quite a blade on it now. Then the other side, leave it flat, that flat and one rub just to take the burrs up. That is very, very sharp. Be careful with that now. Just pop that back in its box. Then we're just a case of cleaning all the bits. Still keep them in order, don't forget. This one we've got to sandpaper this one a little bit. Just clean them off. Because it's a Falco, the blades are only sharpened once a month, if that. They stay sharp a long, long time. Very, very good steel. There you go. It's just cleaned it up a little bit. Look. Now for oiling wise, all I do, I've got a brush with some oil on. Now this is chainsaw oil that I have for when I'm doing chainsawing. Now this is the only time of year I use it when I store it away. I normally put a bit of vegetable oil but if you put vegetable oil on them and store them you'll find the vegetable oil will go mouldy. So it's just a case, not a lot, just a touch look. 
and then we we'll just want the want the excess off and same on there like that. It doesn't need a lot. Then we we'll start assembling the blade. Remember those three. We just we've got plenty of oil on here on the cloth now, look, so we just put a little bit of oil on it, not a lot. So that's those nicely oiled. And we can put the blade back on, not on that one, on that one. Look. Can you see till it clicks in? And it clicks in there, look. You see? Nice and tight. Just a little bit more oil on that because it is a little bit of a bearing on there. Just wipe the excess off, you don't want too much oil on it. Then those two will go together like that so we need now a pin again you can see there's oil on the pin from before so we'll leave that push that through pop that on top lay it flat now if you can remember this piece went on next yes that way round isn't it? it goes that way round so the lock will lock onto that little bit of a beat there can you see? Then we'll put the the crown locking screw in. Just for now, we'll just put it loose so it holds it together. Just do it with your fingers for now, there's no need to tighten it up. Just make sure everything's nice and clean. Then we're going to put the crown wheel on. Don't oil this because it starts slipping while using it. And say it's lost a lot of its crown there. Let's get it turning on that. That's nice. Beginning to feel like a pair of second ears again. The spring, we just wipe the wipe the mess off. When we put it on, it will compress it anyway. It goes on there and on there like that. Oh. Now you keep tightening now. Doesn't need a lot. If you just keep feeling and keep turning a little bit, a little bit more. If you just show you, if you go too tight, it'll lock. So if you go until you can hear those two blades sort of whisper past one another, then you know it's you know it's ready. Little, see that's sticking a bit. That's a bit too tight. Go back a little bit. That's beautiful. That is. Then we loosen this off, so that locks into that crown. I don't know if you can see that there. Loose. It locks into there and then we just tighten it down with the fingers again. Okay, then we just tighten this one up with a little spanner. Wrong end. There you go. Just lock this one down. Be careful you don't tighten this up too fast and it will spin that and lock that down again and you have to start all over again. A final wipe. carefully blade and then bring in lock round that's a pair of secateurs as you can see very sharp now got a little bit of oil in the joints ready for storage for the winter I should just pop that away this one to sharpen this this is not a bypass this is an anvil that's the anvil and that's the blade so that comes down and chops but I said I'll try and sharpen it for them but it's very dirty let's just see what we can do just take the dirt off the blade
a little bit on the anvil there. Now I don't think I would take this apart. I don't know if I took it apart. I never took one of these apart, so I don't know. So what I should do, I should try. I should try and just take the bears off the blades with the tip of the, the dime. You can see them just putting a white line on. Can you see it? I don't know if you can see that. Can you? you can see that silver line appearing where it's taking the bears off. Let's do the other side and see what we can do. I have to turn it this way. We can watch the black line on the blade and we'll just try and take the bears off so put the blade back on. Just very finely. If you put something black under it, you might be able to see it now. Can you see that? It's just took the bears off the blade so that'll be sharp now. They actually belong to Gemma these, that's why I've took them off her so I should sharpen them. But you can see the blades now nice and clean and sharp. I'm not going to oil anything, oh I ought to oil this spring, it looks like it's a bit rusty. I'll just give it a touch with the with the oil. Don't to get too much oil on it, be on our hands and everywhere. There you are. That's they come together quite well. It doesn't say what mate they are, but quite good. As you can see now, these these are the number sevens that still want doing, but I'll keep these in use. This one now will actually, pardon me, it'll actually put this away for winter now, and I'll just use the number sevens for a bit. Now we're coming up to the time of the year where we do the holly rings. Now the village Christmas fair is towards the end of this month and I'm going to do my donation from me and Di of 10 holly rings. We do it last year so we'll do it again. So now I need to be getting them strawed up. Now if you're going to do your own holly rings you need to be now thinking about getting the equipment ready. I'll just show you what I've got here. I think there's 20 in there. We'll donate 10 so I shall have plenty. We need wire for wrapping the conifer and the holly etc onto the rings. And of course my berries. Now we've got plenty of berries on the holly this year but if you've used the holly with the berries on the birds take them away. They, they tend to leave these alone a little bit. I've got loads more stuff to put on, some small baubles etc. I'll just show you that I've done five. Five we've got ready so I've got quite a few to do. When I was with Gemma and she was doing a Halloween display she said it's nice to do something different so and I said to her that we ought to really do something different than the holly rings or with the holly rings because we've done holly rings for years and years and years so we thought something different so I've been thinking and what I've come up with it's two rings opposite it actually takes three rings to make it three of these rings to make it I have strawed it up and I shall conifer it and put some holly on it and perhaps put some couple of bells or something inside and then I might put one of those LED lights what Gemma had through it as well just to give it a bit of colour and then the idea is we do have these crazy ideas but the idea oh. is that where you've had your hanging basket once it's finished and all pretted up we could hang that where you hang your hanging basket on the front of the house or on this case front of the cottage I think it looked quite nice quite a bit of work to do yet I will show you how I progress with it now I will show you how we're getting on and how to make the rings 
at the beginning of December and also how we get on with our I don't know what would you call it you think <laughs> double ring <laughs> no and I'll show you how we're getting on with this so you can hang this or you could make one and hang it on the hanging basket bracket I think it'd be quite nice when it's done but early stages yet never made one before so we'll have to see how we go with this I hope we don't get too cross making it now we're just going to have a walk down the garden and show you a bit of a November update if you like I have been out with my gadget this morning taking pH readings so we know what we need to do ready for next year's beds it's only a rough with this it's not as precise as what it is using the chemical way but this will, will give us a rough guide on the pH and the temperature of the soil I've got my list from my readings and we'll go down to the beds and we'll show you what we've done and hopefully what we're going to plant in them next year now these are the Japanese overwintering onions and at the far end you can just see them or the at the far end you can see all the garlic has come up I think one or two's missed now the onions there's one or two failed but I've got some in some pots which I'll just replace those later fill the gaps up make it a full run the soil was really dug deep two spits deep double dug manure in the top and bottom so it's a really good bed to produce some good onions late spring when the onions are really growing well I should take this cover off and the frame will go, go down to the brassicas and have a new cover they'll all have new covers next year and we'll leave this open then for growing on the onions the rest of Big B has been double dug, manure in the bottom, manure in the top, which is actually two feet deep if you can remember we put the stick in a few weeks ago. There's one or two places still a bit high, then's the last piece is dug, but that will settle. Now this will be for the next year's onion crop and the beans and the peas will be in this bed as well. Really, really a lot of work gone into this bed the pH came out at 6.5 which I'm well pleased for that that will want no attention to it perhaps a bit of blood fish and bone on the top in the spring but we'll worry about that later now we're up on bed A where we've got the two raised beds there parsnips in this one carrots in that one now these are done really really well in these raised beds we've had beautiful carrots and we've had the biggest parsnips I've ever grown on this garden now today next year's we'll take these frames to the bottom where we're going to grow the carrots and we'll double the length of the frame so we get a bit extra crop the Brussels I'm a little bit disappointed with this year but we will have Brussels so we're not to grumble and the Brussels this year I know it's been one of the hottest summers we've had but there's something niggling me that these I've grown this variety of Brussels for a few years now on different plots up and down the garden in the rotation and there's something about these Brussels that are not quite right I don't think the the Brussels that I normally grow I don't think the hybrids what I look for on a hybrid is a nice oops a nice spiral of Brussels and these are not quite as big as I'd like neither but if you take this one for instance this there's no spiral at all the space too much you they're supposedly the same plant I don't think they are and it goes through the whole of the bed I have some that are more blue and some that are more green I'm not too happy with them but saying that we have got Brussels there's a few cabbages just 
picking up again unfortunately the chickens got in and they attacked everything here so everything was not back quick pretty bad with it but they will they will they got some nice cabbages coming the ph on this one we've been liming it well obviously because the brassicas and it came out at 6.5 and after a year a year of production that's not bad i'm quite happy with this so <laughs> So next year, this will be the pumpkin and squash bed. We'll put the frame up in, on here and because I know I'm going to get a lot in my Christmas stocking, a lot of seeds. So we'll prepare the bed ready rather than try and squeeze it in like we did this year. We'll do a proper bed for them. I quite enjoy growing them actually, it's good fun. So now that makes us now onto a four bed rotation not a three bed rotation so I'll have to alter all my planning because of the new the new bed we'll obviously put some other things in here that we don't usually put in we'll try some new crops as well in in the space that we've got as well should be interesting bed this one and everything has now been tucked up in here ready for winter as you can see the cuttings are all sat nicely now everything's been now bedded down for winter in here and trimmed i'm afraid that chickens have been pecking at the strawberries plants i don't mind they'll grow up again but it's coming to the time now where the chickens are actually locked out the fruit bushes have all been bedded down i've got a nice mulch of manure around the tops the leaves are falling now the blueberries got some nice autumn color in there. i took a reading of the blueberries soil while i was up here with that little gadget it came out at 4.5 which is very very good i'm quite happy with that i might have to just top them up a little bit more with ericaceous i see the rains washed it down a bit so they take a little bit more so continue that until the fall and then colouring up they're losing the leaves they're fine hello everyone friday today very very cold today we're very exposed on this site and the wind is cutting across a very icy wind so i've been down all wrapped up and have harvested and brought them up to the shed just to show you what we've picked this morning this is what we've picked this morning very very cold washing them under the tap but i managed it in the end we've got a celeriac very impressed with celeriac i'm going to grow properly grow that now a couple of swede slugs are having a little bit of a party but that's fine they'll just cut off some very nice carrots they're doing rather well very clean this year we're putting them in that raised bed has been a bonus for those leeks we've got three good leeks there turnips again the slugs have been at them those four will be the last of them for this season i've grubbed the rest out they're just too bad parsnips look at this that's good parsnips for me that is and you can see how cold it is this morning he's got his legs crossed that one so that's the parsnips and also we've had three or four good frosts in the morning now so I've actually picked Diane some of the Brussels. That's put a smile on her face when she gets those. As you can see, we're doing quite well out of the garden with the autumn crops. But you've also got to remember, and this is where I have my piece of paper because Diane told me and I would forget them if, it, if uh, I didn't have them. In the freezers, we've got peas, broad beans, cauliflower, celery, broccoli, French beans, plus all the fruit from the fruit cage. So although we're coming to the end of the season, vegetable wise out of the garden, soon we'll just have the, the Brussels and one or two leeks, etc. down there and a few carrots probably. But we have all this in the freezer. So we're still harvesting, the freezers are full and in the shed we have potatoes, we have onions, garlic, they're all hanging up, 
we have the last of the summer cabbies there's about two left and then I noticed when we was down the garden the savoys are beginning to heart up now so they'll probably follow these cabbages and these when these are ready we've still got a few apples left in there some bramleys actually off the top as well so we're doing quite well so that's my piece of paper done now <laughs> as I said it's Friday today that'll be about it for this week it's very very cold I think the best thing we can do is go up the house and get warm now many thanks for those people who subscribed we do appreciate it and hopefully We'll see you next week. Bye now.